Today we've got this beautiful 1980 LP400S. What a car. You guys are gonna love this story. This is an urban barn find car. The guy who we bought this car from had it sitting in his underground car garage downtown Toronto since the mid 90s. It was time for him to sell the car. He watched the TV show. He gave us a call. We went down there and bought it the same day, 25 minutes from our shop. The car was in great condition. All we did was paint the car to exactly the color combination that it left the factory with. The car was red. We repainted it in this Acapulco blue, restoring the car to its original color combo, how Jacques Villeneuve ordered this thing new. Not the Formula One champion, his uncle, IndyCar racer and Canadian snowmobile racer Jacques Villeneuve, not to be confused with Gilles, his brother Jacques. Lamborghini built the Countach from 74 all the way to 1990 with a whole ton of different variations. This LP400S Series 2 is honestly my favorite version. I'm not a big fan of the 25th anniversary big wing, you know, obnoxious looking car with the huge flares and probably an extra thousand pounds of stuff. Everyone likes the stripped down LP400 Periscope car. But in my mind, this car has just the right amount of flair so that you know at a glance this thing is a Countach. So the initial Periscope car, the LP400, they had pretty narrow tires on it. And frankly, it didn't corner that well. So they just went bananas. Check these things out. They went to a 345, 15 inch. These are the widest tires you could order at the time. All right, let's have a look at the engine here. 3.9 liter V12, what a monster. Six big Weber carbs, I mean the thing looks badass. To get the balance of the car right, they wanted to mount the transmission as far forward as they could. So they mounted the transmission in between the two seats in front of the engine and had it run all the way through the back, through the sump, all to try and improve the handling of this car. <laughs> this the slanted door sill really just funnels you into the seat. You know, the first thing you notice here is this giant armrest just so happens to be where the transmission sits. They were trying to get this thing as far forward as possible to balance the car well, and it just so happened to end up in the cockpit next to the driver. So dog-like pattern here with first gear being down, and they've got a good little lockout here that you're supposed to flick every time after you back out of your driveway, just so you don't accidentally stick the thing in reverse. You know, looking at the interior on this thing, it's what you'd expect. It's not perfect. It's not even good, frankly, but who cares? It's a Lamborghini Countach. You know, I love the dash on this thing. I don't know if it's suede or velvet or whatever, but it looks like a jewelry display. As much as the fit and finish isn't all that great on these cars, I love the interior. I love this seat, but they put you in kind of a slouching position. If you had a bad back, you really wouldn't want to take this thing on a long drive. You know, for the sheer amount of glass and the sheer number of windows on this thing, I mean, three on the door here, this is ridiculous. I don't know what they were thinking if they just like measured a hamburger, like you couldn't even order a coffee in this thing. So you did get some options here as far as climate control. You got apparently what is pretty good air conditioning and heat, all in Italian obviously, on this nice little metal instrument panel. And of course you get a big toggle for your pop-up headlights. So while the driver has a pretty narrow footbox and a nice carpeted dead pedal, the passenger just kind of gets a holy crap bar to brace your feet on down there. Listen to that. That literally sounds like 1980. Oh, yes. All right, down for first, down for first. <laughs> No power steering is a real treat in a tight parking lot. Okay, make sure you lock out. Reverse, don't want to stick it in reverse. What really is nice about this car is the fellow that we bought it from had it serviced every single year by a Lamborghini dealer. We've got all the records, every receipt. This thing was maintained meticulously. 
I know that I can beat on this thing a little bit and still not hurt the car. The throttle response is unbelievable. It's right there, but it doesn't go anywhere until you really get it up to about 4,000 RPM. And you've got to keep the revs up if you want to drive this thing fast. You can really feel the rigidity of the space frame chassis, just like Formula One cars would have been built in the 70s and 80s. Oh my goodness, not the smoothest ride. I want to say I can feel each bump, not only in the steering wheel, but all the way up and down in the steering column. No, I'm not, I'm not sure what Lamborghini was thinking. I don't know if they ever even put a driver in this car, in this configuration, until it was time to drive the thing. I know the steering wheel is so far away. The pedals are pretty close. The foot box is tiny, you know, you really need to be in driving shoes. But boy, is this a lot of fun. right around 5,000 RPM. Red line at 9,000 RPM. As much as this car is really not a race car, it certainly has a race engine. Great little gearbox in it. Things shift smoothly all the way up through the RPM. The visibility out the front is awesome. I feel like you can see the wheels. You know, and you really feel like you're positioned kind of like a Formula One car of the day. Your feet are almost over top of the front wheels and it really feels like that while you're driving it. But again, upshifted too early. Really gotta be disciplined and let it wind up right up to the appropriate RPM. Can tow heel pretty easy in this thing. <laughs> Let's wind it out. Listen to that thing hum. Oh yeah, it is happiest at high RPM. Oh, what a weapon. It is the weirdest feeling being in this car, you know, with basically flat glass on every corner you know, you feel like you're in a, I don't know, like a jet car or like a Philip K. Dick novel, some sort of sci-fi mobile with the flat glass, everything's kind of like comes to a point up at the top of your head. You would not want to roll one of these things. Let's see how these 345s handle. give these cars I think it's completely unwarranted I can't believe how well this car handles you know it I can't get it to push and I can't break it loose it's got to be because of those Pirelli P7s you know it really does respond to every input you give it and I love how it feels with the wheels right under your feet what a pure driving experience no electronics no traction control no ABS no power steering. You get out of this car exactly what you put in. Oh yeah. I swear I say this about every car I drive, but this car, it turns everyone's head. I have gotten more thumbs up, hands down in this thing than any other car I've driven. There's something so distinctive about an 80s Italian car. You know, I don't know if it's the V12 or the high RPM or the smell, 
or the leather at the time. You can't beat it. So now we get to the point where we ask the question, do you need a car like this? No, no one needs a car like this. But do you want a car like this? Everyone my dad's age had two posters on their wall, Farrah Fawcett and the Countach. And since one of those is unobtainable, yeah, you want a car just like this. Thanks for watching. Be sure to drop a like and a comment now to help our channel get seen. Hit subscribe and check out our other videos for more legendary motor cars.